Okay. Let me start uh, this topic by introducing the idea of a gravitational field. Now suppose that I have I this is the ground, and suppose that I have a ball uh, there. Okay, then there is a force of gravity that pulls it down. Now suppose that I bring the ball here. Right, some distance away. Uh, there is also a force of gravity that pulls it down. If I bring the ball there, force of gravity pulls it down. Bring the ball there, force of gravity pulls it down. So at any point, say um, uh, around this this part of uh, above the ground, there would be a force. Um, if I put a ball there, or if I put a ball there, 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 anywhere, there is a force. So in this whole region of space, it is possible that a force can act. Now, we describe this region of space by calling it a field. Let me write this down. A field um, is a region of space in which a force acts and um, now and and this since this force comes from gravity uh, we can describe this view by calling it a a gravitational field. Gravitational field is a region of space in which a a force a, a gravitational force acts. Gravitational force acts. And if it's an electric field from electrical charges, you can replace the word gravitational by electrical. Electrical or uh, magnetic field then magnetic force and so on now in in the this particular example where we have a ball that uh, we hold in our hands uh, quite near to the surface of the earth then where, wherever we walk we would expect the force on the ball meaning the weight to be uh, exactly the same and uh, whether we hold it high or low uh, whether we walk here or there as, as long as it's just within our, our human uh, uh, range of motion, uh, it would be exactly the same weight. Now, at, meaning that it will have the same uh, magnitude, the force has, has the same magnitude on the ball, and it will, be, it will always be pointing down in the same direction. Now, this kind of a situation, right, a, a field that has produces uh, the same force on the same object uh, in the same direction, is called this this kind of a field is called a uniform field uniform field okay. so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to think about um, the work done by a uniform field on the object to look at the effects of this okay so here we go so back to our empty field now so starting again uh, with the ball so we know that there is a weight there is a force of gravity pulling it down okay, this force uh, it's the weight, we can call it mg, that's the force. Now suppose that I throw the ball horizontally. I throw the ball horizontally, with initial velocity um, u. Now let me give this some numbers. Suppose that, uh, that the mass of the ball is 0 0.1. So just a small ball, 0 0.1 uh, kilogram. Suppose I throw it with uh, 
uh, horizontally with, at, with a speed of say three um, meters per second okay so the ball flies starts off horizontally and and then it curves down the, the path curves downwards the ball will fall at the same time moving to the right let's um, think about what happens after a short time now, how short a time let's say uh, after 0 0.4 seconds after 0 0.4 seconds um, the ball Say, let's say the ball comes here after 0 0.4 seconds and now uh, it has a velocity uh, pointing at a slanted direction a slanted direction there okay so uh, 0 0.4 seconds Right, okay, maybe uh, instead of saying that it has fallen 0 0.4 seconds, now what I'm going to do for now is that I'm, I'm just going to, instead of giving, thinking about the time, let me think about the distance instead. Let me uh, suppose that Right, after a certain time, uh, when it reaches, what happens when it reaches a certain level? Let's say it has fallen by a certain distance of, okay, of say two meters. Okay, I'll call, I'll call this H. Okay, so the question is, I want to find, I want to find the kinetic energy of the ball. What is the kinetic energy of the ball? After it has fallen uh, over a height of two meters, right as it flies. So the way to do this question is to is is this. We can start with the initial the, the ball at first. So in the beginning, the ball is shown with this um, speed. So in the beginning, it has a certain kinetic energy. So let me write this down. The starting I'll call it the initial initial kinetic energy. It's given by the formula half m mv squared. If I call that m, uh, the initial speed is given as u. So initial kinetic energy is half m u squared. Okay, using those numbers. As it falls, as it falls, um, the because it, it since it falls because of the force from the gravity, the, the force of gravity is actually doing work on the ball. Okay, now we've learned how to calculate work. Um, let's say the work, the work done by uh, the force. Of gravity, meaning the weight. Let's see. We have learned how to calculate this work done um, correctly when we have a, a complicated motion like that. We have learned that we should take the force times the distance moved or the displacement in the direction of the force. Now, the direction of the force is downwards. But this displacement is, is not downwards, or it's not even a, in, in a fixed direction. It keeps changing direction, it keeps bending, bending, bending until it reaches, reaches here. But we can we can still think of uh, a component um, or displacement 
in the direction of force. So the component of this displacement, okay, the curve motion might be a bit more complicated, but the the component in the direction is obtained simply by um, okay, that's the starting position. Okay, you can imagine drawing a line through the vertical line through through the starting position along the direction of the force, and then we go to the final position, let's say down there, and we drop a perpendicular to to the vertical line, okay, to this vertical line through the starting position. So that's the final position. We draw this horizontal line there. And this vertical distance then is the component of the, the full displacement, which is 2 meters downwards. So we have our component, the displacement component, and we know the force. Uh, the force is just mg, mass times acceleration. Okay. Mass times acceleration due to gravity. So that's the force. That's our, that's our force. Okay, and we need to multiply by this 2 meters, which is the h. Okay, which is the height. So the height, therefore, or rather, uh, is just the displacement in the direction of the force. Alright, the, the displacement, the, com the displacement component in the direction of force is just the height. So this is the this is the displacement in direction of the force. So once we have that, the work done is mgh. And this work done uh, would become the energy will, will be added to the kinetic energy, the initial kinetic energy, to give the final total kinetic energy. So therefore, we, we can now find the answer. The final, final kinetic energy would be the initial kinetic energy plus the work done by the weight or by the force of gravity. Okay, and that would be half m u squared u initial velocity plus the work done by the gravity which is m g h m g h okay, so that's one way to look at it m g h is the work done um, by the gravity 